welcome the students uh, welcome to 10 plus technology lecture is lecture number 12 uh, in this section you know that uh, we are having discussions on 10 film uh, depositions uh, and in this particular uh, part of the lectures uh, we will talk about introductions to chemical vapor deposition so let's start the lectures uh, with chemical vapor depositions I mean we already have a brief uh, discussion is about uh, the chemical vapor depositions and we said that the chemical vapor depositions is normally happen in a few step that is first of all we have uh, we have to introduce the reactive gases to the chamber uh, that is uh, like you can see it here we have uh, a CVD uh, deposit film through the chemical reaction and the surface uh, absor uh, absorptions so what we have then uh, we activate the gases that is uh, decompositions by heat or plasma I mean that is uh, and first step uh, we basically introduce the reactive gases to the chamber and inside the chamber you know that we uh, we apply uh, some sort of the heating and with the help of that heating process uh, we basically try to activate the gases that is we trying to uh, perform the decompositions of the gases uh, I mean uh, that normally we achieve by heating or by plasma process and then we have gas uh, adsorptions uh, by uh, the substrate surface I mean here uh, you can see it here by yourself we have uh, the source cases that they basically interact with the substrate films uh, so we have the reaction here at this particular area so what we have uh, next then we have uh, reactions that take place on the substrate surface uh, and we have uh, the film form at that particular surface uh, transport uh, then we have transports of the volatile byproducts uh, away uh, uh, from the substrate and at the end uh, uh, we have uh, the exhaust uh, waste and here you can see that normally we utilize uh, I mean some general setup during the CVD techniques I mean depend upon uh, uh, your final applications CVD varies with respect to that particular uh, application I mean this is uh, somehow assemble CVD technique that basically we utilize for the growth of uh, boron nitride uh, nanostructures later on maybe we will discuss in full detail about this kind of techniques uh, so uh, let's discuss about some of the most commonly utilized chemical vapor deposition system so like you can see it here in this particular structures we have two basic kind of the chemical vapor deposition system and the first type uh, basically we have I mean here you can see that this is the first kind of the uh, chemical vapor deposition system so what we have basically we basically have a coarse a reactor uh, coarse reaction chamber and inside that chamber uh, uh, we uh, we place a silicon vapors uh, and a grip ice receptors and that chamber normally uh, we heat up uh, with respect to uh, R by the application of RF inductions uh, uh, coil I mean RF induction coil they are being utilized to heat uh, the chamber for cooking the uh, materials so here uh, we have the arrangement uh, for the different kind of the gases uh, you can see it here this is basically a silicon tetrachloride liquid that we utilize here we store it here and here at this particular valve we utilize uh, the hydrogen gas and here you can see that we have several wall structures that's been attached here I mean uh, all these have uh, I mean it's a common pipe uh, here we have the walls I mean it's uh, depend upon your type of the material there what kind of material you want to grow so here you supply the kind of the gas with the help of this particular uh, wall I mean uh, you, if you need a uh, 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 hydrochloric acid so you just open these walls so be remember uh, normally at one time you only need one kind of gas or two kind of gas so the rest of the wall that you, uh, you're not utilizing you have to uh, close the wall I mean these are the coal these are the wall and the gas they normally come in uh, cylinder so we different uh, we have different cylindrical structures uh, I mean so in which we have uh, these kind of particular gases the next structure uh, is a bad sample and here you can see that we have a furnace with resistive heatings and inside that resistive heating you know that we have standard vapors and here you can see that uh, here we have just attached uh, 
uh, the gas control and uh, sequencers. I mean, here we have this is the gas controller sequencer, and here we have different kind of the gases. That is one kind of gas, two kind of gas. For example, in the case of boron nitrides, we utilize normally two kind of gases. That is argon, and then uh, we utilize uh, uh, ammonia. Argon we utilize as a reaction atmosphere, and ammonia uh, is being utilized as a nitrogen source at higher temperatures. So here you uh, you need that uh, it's, it's a ventilators where we attach the vacuum pumps for creating uh, certain type of the vacuums uh, to grow in the material pre I uh, means impurity uh, pre materials it's been a trap and uh, this goes to uh, the exhaust I mean uh, the vacuum pump is basically need to uh, evacuate the system that is to remove the dust particles or any other impurity that has been contained inside uh, the system so the first kind of the system that is this kind of the technique or this kind of CVD system is normally uh, this is called the atmospheric uh, uh, cold wall uh, cold wall system and it is being used for the depositions of the epitaxial silicon we have the following technique that is uh, we have the reactions between uh, silicon uh, tetrachloride plus hydrogens uh, uh, which the reactions give us silicons uh, plus a hydrochloric acid the second techniques, uh, this kind of technique, we call that low pressure uh, hard wall system, and it's been used for deposition of polycrystalline and amorphous film, uh, such as poly, uh, polysilicon and silicon dioxide. Uh, one more sample chemical vapor deposition systems uh, that we developed for the growth of the uh, boron nitrides uh, nanotubes. It's very simple as compared to the last two structures. I mean, here we say uh, we have this uh, horizontal quartz tube furnace. Uh, inside that hard uh, uh, quartz tube furnace, we, uh, we place a one enclosed uh, quartz tube. Uh, and inside this one enclosed quartz tube, we place the board filled with the materials. Uh, and the top of that uh, material and the board, we place a few silicon substrate on which we want to grow the thin film. So what actually we have here at the gas inlet, we have attached two gases. Uh, one is called the argon, and the second is called uh, ammonia. Argon is being utilized as a reaction, a reactive atmosphere, as an inert atmosphere, and ammonia uh, later on at the growth stage for uh, providing uh, nitrogen for the growth of a uh, boron nitride structure. Uh, normally, in this kind of uh, uh, process. Uh, we utilize uh, boron, uh, magnesium oxide, and iron oxide as a uh, as a precursors for the growth of the uh, thin film, and uh, the materials that are being taken inside uh, the aluminium uh, board. So here you can see that uh, I mean uh, we uh, uh, at the growth stage initially we have the argon atmosphere, and uh, that's been run. The experimental setup is run up to a certain temperature that is up to thousand degrees centigrade or twelve hundred degrees centigrade. At which we then uh, ch uh, change uh, uh, the gas. I mean, we replace the argon by uh, ammonia gas, and that ammonia flow has been continued for uh, 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 for different uh, growth duration. That is for 30 minutes, uh, or in some cases up to 80 minutes, or uh, maybe uh, 60 minutes, depending upon the structure which you want to grow. Uh, this is uh, basically the uh, the gas outlet. And here the gas bubble is basically indicate that uh, uh, the, the gas is flowing inside. But we remember uh, this is basically, uh, I mean, we have the, the flow meters for measuring, for controlling the flow of the gases. Here we have placed the outlets, uh, the outlet pipe uh, into the water uh, just because to uh, keep the environment safe from the hazardous effect of the ammonia. Are from other materials. I mean, we didn't expose it to the air in order to clean the environment, uh, in order to keep the environment clean from the hazardous effect of the uh, ammonia. And this is the technique we term as, as argon supported thermal chemical vapor deposition because in this technique we didn't utilize uh, the vacuum pump or the rotary pump are creating the other uh, vacuums. Instead, we utilize argon gas as a reactive atmosphere. I mean, we flew before the reaction, we flew the, the system with the argon gas, then we place the material inside, and then we slowly run uh, the reactions uh, uh, in the flow uh, of the argon uh, gas. I mean, inside the inner cell. You know that argon is basically uh, antioxidants and didn't allow the oxygen to react with the materials. So, this, uh, and 
once we have, uh, I mean, you cook the material, you synthesize the material, so it looks like this inside the board. Uh, and you can have it in the palm thin film, the silicon substrate. The white colors, uh, basically, you can see it here at the top of the silicon substrate. It's basically uh, the boron nitride nanotubes are grown at the top of silicon substrate in the form of the thin film. I mean, this is how the thin films of uh, boron nitride nanotubes look uh, at the top of silicon substrate. And this form, uh, this technique has already been published in one of uh, reputed journals uh, published by elsewhere called Journal of Physics and Chemistry of Solid, and that's basically published almost six years ago. That is in 2015's issue. Uh, you know that just like any other techniques, uh, chemical vapor deposition has advantages and disadvantages as compared to physical vapor deposition. I mean, just like any other techniques, uh, CVD technique has its merits and uh, demerits. Uh, so what are those? Uh, let's focus on the advantages first. So uh, we have CVD techniques, uh, high growth rate possible, uh, and we can have good uh, reprodu uh, reproducibility of the uh, technique uh, we can uh, reproduce easily uh, the synthesized material. I mean, uh, basically, if you, uh, I mean, repeat uh, the process uh, uh, as like you do for the first time, so you can easily reproduce uh, your experiments. But be remembers uh, if you are unable to clean the system, just like when you were starting for the first time, so you won't be able to reproduce uh, your structures or your materials. So this is why some from the people complain that you have run the experiment several times, I mean the same kind of parameter they applied, but the material that grows is different from uh, time to time. So the reason basically is that, uh, I mean, when you run the experimental setup, so the system become dirtier or the vacuum chambers has been deposited with different kind of the material. So once, uh, I mean, when you uh, run the setup for the second or the third time, uh, so just because of that earlier deposited materials, uh, your thin film is being contaminated or affected by the residual material that's already left inside uh, the chamber. So be careful, uh, uh, you should take some, uh, you should be extra cautious about the cleanliness of the uh, chamber before running the experimental setup. So with this technique, you can deposit materials which are hard to evaporate. I mean, uh, you have materials and that you believe is hard to evaporate, so you can deposit that with the help of chemical vapor depositions. And this can, the technique can be utilized to grow epitaxial film. So what we have in that particular case, uh, in this particular case, uh, uh, I mean, it's also term is wafer phase epitaxy or uh, VFE for short. And uh, for example of uh, this kind of technique is uh, metal oxide, uh, chemical vapor depositions, uh, that is MOCOD, uh, or we can, we can call that metal organic CVD. I mean, so sometimes you uh, introduce the terminologies according to your own, some people call it metal oxide, chemical vapor depositions, other people call it metal organic uh, CVD. So it's also called OMVFE, uh, that is argonometallic uh, uh, vapor phase epitaxy. Uh, generally, uh, this kind of technique, uh, uh, we have better film qualities, more uh, conformal step coverage. Uh, I mean, uh, see the image. Uh, uh, I mean, just like you see, uh, you, you have seen the image on the previous slide. So, disadvantages of this technique include high process temperature. That normally you go to a temperature beyond 1200 degrees centigrade, particularly in case of boron nitride thin film. Uh, it's a, some sort of complex process. Uh, in which we normally utilize toxics and corrosive gases. An example of that is uh, ammonia, which we utilize for uh, the growth, due, uh, which we utilize for uh, growing boron nitride known as structures. A type of the reactions uh, that normally we do uh, uh, in a chemical vapor depositions uh, techniques. Uh, so first uh, we have thermal dec uh, decompositions, uh, where we uh, decompose the compounds. Uh, I mean, we have a compound in gaseous form that we decompose it into uh, solid or gaseous form. Uh, an example of that is uh, we have silicon decompositions. Uh, we have silicon depositions from saline at 650 degrees centigrade. Our uh, example is, uh, I mean, we have the chemical reaction like you can see it here in the figure. And uh, I mean, we can also have these decompositions and normally these decompositions occur 
at 180 degrees centigrade. I mean, sir, uh, we won't, uh, I mean, we just have a quick look at different kind of reactions. We won't get in full details. Maybe later on, we will, maybe we will have a time. So we will discuss each reactions and full details. Uh, so in CVD reactions, we can have uh, reductions, uh, reactions, uh, like for example, uh, I mean, vanadium uh, deposition at 13, 300 degrees centigrade. And we have this particular kind of reactions. Similarly, we have uh, silicon tetrachloride. Uh, I mean, we have uh, uh, the reductions of silicon from silicon uh, tetrachloride. Uh, we are hydrogens, uh, which normally are at 1200 degrees centigrade. And we have oxidations uh, using oxygens. Uh, I mean, so, uh, here you can see it here. Uh, we have normally the uh, silicon dioxide. Uh, de uh, depositions from saline and uh, oxygen at 400 uh, and 50 degrees centigrade. Uh, similarly, we can have compound formations uh, using uh, ammonia or uh, waters and these are basically uh, the reactions uh, that normally occurs when we have compo uh, compound formation via CVD techniques by using ammonia or water. I mean, the, again, uh, I'm explaining that we are not going into too full details uh, later on maybe when we will have time so we will go into full details uh, i mean so whenever we're trying to go into the lab inside the lab and we're trying to uh, i mean so have uh, some sort of the particular uh, some sort of the experiments so in that particular experiments i will tell you that what kind of the reactions you are repeating uh, by utilizing the uh, cvd techniques uh, so, what kind of CVD sources and substrate we normally utilize during the growth uh, of thin film uh, by chemical vapor deposition technique? So, type of the sources we have gases, uh, and the gases you know that it's the most uh, easiest form uh, of the uh, resources. Uh, we can also utilize uh, volatile liquids. Uh, uh, in addition, so we can have uh, sublimable uh, solids uh, and uh, along with that, we can have uh, combinations uh, of different products. A source's material should be, uh, I mean, we should have some characteristic of the so, uh, source materials uh, that should be, I mean, stable at room temperatures. Uh, it should be sufficiently uh, volatile, uh, high enough partial pressure to get uh, good growth rate. A uh, reaction temperature should be smaller than the melting point of the substrate. A uh, product, uh, I mean, uh, for, uh, produce desired elements on a substrate uh, with easily removable by product and has low toxicity. The substrate uh, that we normally utilize inside CVD techniques uh, need to consider adsorption and surface reactions. Uh, for example, uh, Vendium hexafluoride deposited on silicon, but not on silicon dioxide. I mean, that is special care should be uh, taken when we're trying to deposit a particular type of the thin film uh, on, a, uh, on a particular type of the substrate. So you should know that you should, you should study about the characteristic of the substrate and you should search for the possibility uh, that is uh, in what form the silicons, uh, on, in what form the substrate will be able to to deposit that particular kind part of the of the film, uh, I mean it's, it's a very good example. That is, uh, vanadium uh, hexafluoride can uh, can be deposited on the silicons, but cannot be deposited on silicon dioxide. I mean you should do our level best to prevent silicon from the oxidations. If you are willing to uh, deposit uh, vanadium uh, uh, hexafluoride on the silicon substrate. So this is all we have for this lectures. Thanks for watching. See you in next lectures uh, with further detail about our 10 film depositions. Till then, bye bye.